everyone, and welcome to this evening's episode of the Go Lightly Perspective. Yes. I am Hope Malayel Isha Dawi, mm-hmm. and right here we all have the wonderful Elder Haji Go Lightly, Elder Dawi Yehuda, whatever you've come to know him as. Mm-hmm. Um, and today we're going to be doing something a little different on this episode. It's a little bit. Um, We've been talking amongst ourselves a little bit about the topic of unlocking your hidden treasures. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be asking um, some questions and we're going to have the elder respond. Mm -hmm. Um, First, he's going to kind of give us an overview of the topic and then we'll jump right in. Uh, That was a great intro. I know, you know, it takes a lot for my wife to uh, do a lot of this and you know, I honor the most. I give him all praise, glory, and honor and reverence and deference of his only begotten son. Uh, I thank him for who he is to me, and I thank him for who he's allowed you to be to me. Thank you. uh, you've been an amazing asset, and um, I'm grateful to have you. My life has been enriched. So as you as you stated, we're going to have a, I think it's going to be a, a worthy conversation because we were dealing with we were having some conversations about traumas and experiences that people have and you know why we avoid these things and not not knowing that when we avoid these things a lot of that is hidden treasure mm-hmm. it's really valuable things that the most high wants to uh bring out in you so that you can be a witness to others but as long as you practice this avoidance and you're not willing to shed light on these things Ultimately, it it hinders you. It may not be sin. So we don't want to be condemnatory or judgmental. Our ministry is to try to help people evolve into a, a greater version of themselves, a more righteous version of themselves, a version that has less leaven from Rome and from Herod. Mm-hmm. I really can't get be, uh, away from that theme that we dealt with for Passover because there's we're still exposing the leaven and a lot of that is what we practice in in avoiding Mm -hmm. we try to avoid and that can become crippling and even irresponsible on so many different levels so i know that you had pulled a couple scriptures or a couple things that you wanted to read but um was there some place where you wanted to start with or did you want me to just go ahead and um i'm gonna start with psalm 144 okay cool no, Psalm 34. Cool. Yeah, Psalm 34. It's 119. Nope, that's 34. Okay. Verse 17. Okay. Okay. The righteous cry, and Yahuwah heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Mm-hmm. Yahuwah is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Yes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahuwah delivereth him out of them all. Wow. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. I'll stop there. That that is a that's a very good scripture. I didn't know that you were going to read all of that, but I, I proposed a question to you, which that, that scripture really answers. I said, you know, can you trust the most high? with the things that you've hidden Mm -hmm. from him you know do we really trust him to deal with the things that Mm -hmm. you know were enunciated when our bones are broken when we have a broken and a contrite spirit and the scripture says if you do have that he will in no wise turn you away which is it's it's easy to say Mm -hmm. i realize that oftentimes that when we've been broken when we've been hurt we as a, as a people, we were given the scriptures, typically from, you know, the Western mindset. Mm-hmm. We use that as a salve. We use that as an ointment to try to heal us. And it did. Mm-hmm. However, there's more work to do. And those are some of the things that we want to discuss. Mm-hmm. Um, there may be this superficial healing where mm-hmm. you may have a scab that's just right over the top. However, if you push it, if you flick that scab up. You may see pus, you may see infections that that could be uh, underlying a deeper infection mm-hmm. that you really have to have debris okay. and cut out. So is this in reference, is this kind of 
alluding to the trauma that you often speak of um, that our people suffer from. Is that what you're yeah, alluding um, to? So what are some of those examples? Because it's not necessarily, it's not a physical trauma mm -hmm. per se. I guess it is in a mental kind of way. Well, right. Can you elaborate a little bit? Well, I look at trauma as anything that has changed you mm -hmm. irreparably from the time that you had that experience to where you were originally. So you there's like this moment in time where there's just this before and after moment. Mm -hmm. And that could be from, I, I don't want to use extremes, but that could have been molestation. It could have been abuse. It could have been a, a horrible car wreck. It could have been um, a bad relationship. It could have been um, having, you know, your words twisted mm -hmm. by people that you love even in uh, church environments, in uh, assembly environments, that's trauma. Mm -hmm. Those are things where there are before and after moments that we really have to get down to the granular components of it so that we can heal from it. So even when we speak about a person or we speak about the experience, your neck don't get hot. Right. Right. <laughs> your heart your heart don't skip a beat. That's how you know that the healing is complete uh, from what I found. Okay, that's good. That's very good. Because I think um, first having the knowledge of these traumas yes, and accepting or being sober in your self-assessment mm -hmm. is required. It is. So what you're saying is the complete opposite of avoidance. Okay. So you're saying, you know, avoidance is bad. We don't want to avoid because through acceptance and facing these traumas head on, we can be delivered mm -hmm. and healed. Absolutely. Um, I, I believe that it is absolutely mandatory to address these things mm -hmm. that you, you can only avoid for so long. And if you do it, it, it's done to your own peril. It's done and causes you to ultimately descend and you can even begin to self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. I've been in in situations where I was um, may have been overly, you know, paranoid, you know, in the military. And they can cause you to be that. And I can I can confess that I had to deal with that um, where you went into a situation and it was as if you knew the outcome before you ever got there. Right. You know, you're self-sabotaging, you're projecting mm -hmm. what's going to happen. And it's not necessarily that mm -hmm. you shouldn't have. I'm not talking about having prejudice where you mm -hmm. prejudge like no 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 you've already mapped it out <laughs> and you know what it's going to be mm -hmm. and now it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy right. it's like a subconscious enactment yes. to get to that outcome yes. that you've already kind yes. of placed in your mind so if you're thinking you know this relationship is going to fail mm -hmm. without any evidence of failure on the horizon mm -hmm. then you may go into this type of series of behaviors that would cause it to fail. Absolutely. Subconsciously. Absolutely. Because subconsciously you're responding to this new person, mm -hmm. this new situation, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a, a romantic relationship, but you're responding to them as if it was this previous mm -hmm. experience and it's totally not them. So, you know, word of caution to you, you patriarchs and young patriarchs, as you're gathering... <laughs> You're acquiring, you know, a woman. You got to make sure that you have these weighty conversations and you can't just go by what you see. Mm -hmm. Physicality, pulchritude, beauty, all that. Yeah, I, I get it. However, all, man, you got to go deeper because uh, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Yes. But, you know, a woman that fears Yah, she sh is the one that should be praised. And if she has feared Yah properly, Maybe she has been able to maintain herself to prevent so many traumas, mm -hmm. uh, so many things that uh, would, would prevent her from becoming one with you. Right. That's good. That is important. I think um, that's why you have to depart from the world when making these decisions. Yes. Because the world will tell you totally what you're, you're saying is not yeah. important. Yeah. What metric are you using? Right. That what what criteria are you using to validate whether or not someone would be a good spouse outside of what you see? So, and if that's it, man, you you're you're not 
a Hebrew, you haven't crossed over it because mm -hmm. that's what really it means to be a Hebrew. You've passed over. You've crossed over. You're still using the optics of Rome. You're still right. using these carnal optics, which I mean, I get it. I got a beautiful wife. I love you. Okay. You're beautiful. Right. However, it has to be more substantive than that. Right. Okay, so I think we're deviating a little bit, so it's kind of smidge. just a smidge. But we're going to get back on the unlocking the hidden treasures, because I think that that's very important, because I think when people avoid, it's a coping type of a mechanism, mm -hmm. but it doesn't lead to growth. Yes, yes. So explain a little bit about how facing traumas or, or things that people are hiding within themselves so that other people won't know, fear for shame or whatever, how are they kind of hindering growth? Um, growth typically, that's a great question, by the way. Growth typically is painful. Um, we, you know, I was a young man and, you know, when you start to grow, you hit your growth spurt, it can be painful. You can have cramping. You can have all, all types of complications that are associated with the growth process. And I would say that if you're watching us, then the Father has blessed you with the gift of, of curiosity, mm -hmm. of being intrigued by the things that may be preventing you from truly ascending. Because that's what we want. We want to ascend. We want to be more like him. However, if we remain as we are or cast doubt on who Yah is by saying that he made us a certain way um, that is not like his character, then we will ultimately stay where we are. We'll kind of plateau. And I, I'm of the, the, the thought of the mindset that these things really are hidden treasures. Mm -hmm. That and that's what I, you know, kind of start with that if you begin to dig and I believe that you should have someone that can help you dig, mm -hmm. that can help you on this, this guided exposure mm -hmm. where it's in a uh, somewhat of a controlled environment where, um, the, where you don't, where at least, let me, let me say it another way. The mind that experienced the trauma may not be the same mind that can heal the trauma. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need some outside assistance. I'm not against therapy. I know that some uh, people may be against therapy, going to get therapy from uh, a secular mm -hmm. uh, person. However, they'll turn around and be injured, break a foot, break a leg, have um, any type of dis-ease, mm -hmm. and they'll go right to the doctor for that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I believe that mental health is, is important. Yes, it is. Um, the scripture said that the curses cause our people to be mad. Mm -hmm. He struck us with madness. And you can see some madness and i'm not talking about just anger i'm talking about psychological, psychological um, imbalance. damage and imbalance yes. but i want to read uh this as it relates to this this uh this this treasure that we have um in matthew um matthew chapter 13 verse 44. Uh, i love this text uh where the Messiah was likening the kingdom of Yah or the kingdom of heaven to a certain thing. Um, verse 44 reads thus. Again, the kingdom of Yah is likened to a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hides and for the and for joy thereof, go to sell all that he has to buy the field. So this man finds a treasure. Mm -hmm in a field and he's willing, he first of all had to dig, he had to engage mm -hmm. and put forth some sweat equity in order to find it. Mm -hmm. And once he saw the true value in it, he kept it mm -hmm. for himself. So I'm not saying that when you find these traumas, you expose it to the world until you're at a point to where value can be right. assessed and they can glean something from it. You understand? It's not valuable for me to to just be here. Let's just say if um, if you're still wounded, if I'm still <laughs> wounded, or if I'm still going through that thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? I haven't really gotten the value and delivered. the benefit <laughs> of overcoming. I have not been delivered from that right. thing, but um, thank you. Right. I'm lying to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not being 
true and authentic with with myself and where I am. And whenever you 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 do that, you almost lose track of, of reality. Right. There there is no true pinpoint and location as to where you really are in your being mm -hmm. because you're not being truthful. You're not right. being honest. Mm -hmm. And so you're projecting falsehood. So like we avatar. You got an avatar. Thank <laughs> right. you. It's like Thank an you. Avatar. But we don't want to do that, please. Right. So if you are projecting this falsehood, do you even really know who you are? No. No. And is that then an issue when attempting to go forward into relationships with people? Mm -hmm. Because you can see, you know, we often hear in the world people say, oh, you know, they send a representative for the first six months. Yeah. And then a representative That's true. checks out and now you're dealing with this person whom you've never met. Right. Because, you, you know, they've been orchestrating the whole time. Uh-huh. This to false be narrative, this yeah. false narrative because they are either uncomfortable with really who they are and how you'll perceive who they really are. So they're kind of putting off what they think you or whomever mm -hmm. would be more accepting of. And in six months, they're like, allow me to reintroduce <laughs> myself. My name is Ha H to the AJ. <laughs> right. And then at that point, you're like, wait a minute. I ain't signed up for this. I don't like, even know who guy? you are. Who right. So, you know, why do you think people do that? Why do people, is it the trauma that you're speaking of that yes. it causes people to either, maybe it's a coping thing for themselves. They've even bought into this delusion mm -hmm. that this is real for them mm -hmm. in this space. Mm -hmm. But in the darkness that you speak of, yeah. that's when the truth can come the out. The truth comes out and then they have this duality going yes. on. Yes. Yes. So um that that delusional piece is is rife in the culture. Mm -hmm. Um it's actually quintessential uh, for people to to exist because they're so disconnected from who they really are. Mm -hmm. See we really haven't had, you know, as, as, you know, Muslims would say, you know, you don't have that knowledge itself. And that, that goes deeper than just points of identity. I'm talking about you. Mm -hmm. Who are you in those dark moments? Mm -hmm. Because how you react in those times of uncertainty is really going to reveal who you are. Mm -hmm. Because now you're operating from a subconscious mindset. This isn't like you can't really play and mask and cover when it gets that deep. So then... We really get the chance to see who you are. And so you have to really delve into and dig for that treasure. And you have to ask yourself, well, when I say, you know, I'm, I know who I am and I'm going to do things that are in my best interest. Is that me five years ago? Mm -hmm. Is that me present um, and accounted for today? Or is that a, a different version of me? Five years in the future, mm -hmm. 10 years of the future, which me am I really dealing with? Am I intact and in touch with? And that's that's really a question because people may be projecting mm -hmm. what they want to be right. versus what they are. Right. That's why feedback is important. Can you receive feedback? Right. That's why it's important. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a, a marker along a journey. If you're mm -hmm. off the path, you can't see, you know. Yeah. You got to come back over here in order to get to where you're trying to go. And that's the, the feedback, the little reflectors on the road mm -hmm. <laughs> gives you feedback yeah. when you run over it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you got to get back on right. the path. <laughs> no, <laughs> so. that, that's good. And you, but if people are, if they're army and they're um, a, a village or an island unto themselves, mm -hmm. they, they're not getting any feedback. Right. They're not, they don't have anyone whose opinion um, they value greater than their own. They're not giving themselves the criteria to say, you know, pass or fail because that criteria causes them to be able to measure. And if you don't measure it, uh, if you, you don't, manage it. you can't manage it. Thank you. But I want to go to this uh, 2 Peter 2, 9. I, I really love this text as we're talking about um, the shadow self almost. The shadow self, that self that's in the dark that comes out after six months <laughs> that and this other person wasn't dealing with. Or, you know, I'm going to show restraint. I'm going to stay focused. It's first? Yeah. First Peter. Okay. 
First Peter uh, 2 and 9. This is actually uh, Kepha when he was uh, reciting Deuteronomy 7 and 6. But uh, for sake of time, I'll just go ahead and read this. Uh, 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 First Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So we want to allow the light mm -hmm. of investigation, mm -hmm. the light of the most high, the light of therapy, the light of meditation, the light of scripture to shine into dark areas. And what do you mean by dark areas? Those, those shadowy areas where there's no structure. Mm -hmm. It's full of chaos. It's full of uncertainty. It's full of wrath and doubt and um, what, whatever your thing is, because everybody has a thing. So we want to come, we want to allow the light of the word to penetrate into those dark places. Okay. That's heavy. That's heavy. And you have to be aware mm -hmm. in order to even know that you're operating in darkness. Okay. So this is a good point to segue okay. because I want to talk a little bit to the married people. All right. Come on. Um, and you said that uh, something greater than your own opinion of mm -hmm. self. Yeah. Um, so, especially for a wife. Yes. The husband's opinion of the wife should be of the utmost importance to the wife. Mm -hmm. Not anybody else's opinion, but his first. Okay. Um, so, when it comes to women in particular, I often will hear how um, women complain about not being happy okay. or the man isn't doing this or he's not doing that. Therefore, I shouldn't have to do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think as far as those hidden things in women? Well, actually, let me tell you what I think <laughs> about I'll the defer. thing. <laughs> Too women. easy. Easiest question all um, night. <laughs> so often, you know, I think it, it's, it's ultimately, because you mentioned, the reason I was going to ask you is because you mentioned the husband creating an environment. Yes. So start there and then I'll say my piece about women. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I saying, see where you're going. Right. I see where you're going. Right. You're saying, you know, there's an environment that's created because you started off saying how you sometimes you need a helper to kind of get through some of these traumas. So this is for people who've already taken this path, got married. They're having all this wrath and chaos and things of that nature that you just mentioned in their marriage. So what is it that you think or what is it that you find in scripture to support or whatever? Yeah. All about the husband and the environment. Right. I will go back to the beginning, mm -hmm. um, the way that, you know, the Most High dealt with us from the beginning. First off, you know, he used his words to speak into the dark areas of the world. And, you know, he calls order to come out of chaos. Mm -hmm. So a patriarch, he needs to have the, the necessary uh, articulation, mm -hmm. being able to to express and to speak life, to create an environment where life can come forth. And if there was darkness, I need to speak light to those areas and not be harsh, judgmental, critical, um, but know that my example and the power that I can um, irradiate um, will help them to recover. And this is not just metaphysical jargon. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more or less of understanding this divine role that a husband has to provide an environment where she can become healed, where she can come to you in a safe place and you're not so thrown off and you like, man, I can't believe she said so and so and so and so. Like we practice not being so reactionary so that when those things come out, if and when they do, you can handle it. Your shoulders are broad. You can handle the weight of that thing and not be moved. You're the post. She's the gate. You let her swing back and forth, but you be steady 
be stable, be unmovable, not a cloud without water being tossed to and fro. And I'm not advocating that she be that either. Either, However, I'm just speaking to a more seasoned, a more mature masculinity that can call light, mm -hmm. can speak light and life into dark places, areas, shadowy areas that need healing mm -hmm. with the word of the Most High and also um, with kindness, gentleness, and, and meekness. That would be what I would say. Sounds like a patriarch. Sounds like a patriarch. <laughs> Sounds like our fathers. Sounds like a patriarch. Patient. Yeah. Providing. Proper environment. So, so I say to the women, okay. what dog hinder you? Ooh. If you have been blessed with a patriarch who has provided you with an environment um, where you can thrive, where you can be healed and whole, um, you know, we all have something in our past, something that we've dealt with, um, some things that aren't necessarily pleasant for us. We're not unique to that. That mm -hmm. experience is not unique to any of us. So the question then comes, are you just a rebellious woman? Are you unaware that you are doing these things? And are you not receiving the feedback from your patriarch? Because that's really the only person who can judge Mm -hmm. Anything that's going on in his home, in his house. He's there to tell you and guide you. You're not there to be resistant and hold on to your past hurts and traumas and pains as an excuse to remain where you are. Mm. Now, let's just say, let me give you a scenario. If a woman has been, has dealt with manipulation in the past and now... Where she's, she's been manipulated? Yeah, she's been manipulated in the past and now... She's looking at this environment as an environment that, you know, she, she's judging it mm -hmm. because I know that he's ultimately going to try to do what did, what happened back here. So she really can't receive it. So she's judging it. You know, so you said that this patriarch provided an environment, but she's still pushing back saying that environment is inadequate. It's inadequate. Well, she needs to let go of that previous pain. <laughs> Okay. Because it's unfair. I mean, I know we're not, it's not a, no cotton candy around or anything, but it's just not right for her to hold on to a previous point, data point, mm -hmm. and apply it to this scenario. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the natural thing to do. I'm not saying that people don't do it every day. They can say, oh, it's historical context, but it's not historical context with this current patriarch. Correct. It's in your history, but it's not a history that you share with him. Yeah. So at that point, it is not appropriate. Mm. Good. good. It's not appropriate. That's good. And if that is what you're going to do, then you're not ready <laughs> to be attached to mm -hmm. someone um, because no matter what the environment is, if the woman has made up her mind to hold on to that data point, yeah. to reflect back, to hold that over someone's head, and oh, holding it over someone's head is not even responsible for it. Mm -hmm. It's just not right. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. And they, and, and they almost, you know, require them to perform in that way. They require them to respond to expectations that they haven't even communicated. Right. They they expect because of these traumas, these things that they've hidden, it could sit, so these traumas come in they're they're, they're, they're silent, mm -hmm. but they're not voiceless. Mm -hmm. They they may be quiet, and if you have ears to hear, you can hear some of those things. You know, as as a you know as a man, you know you can hear it. I can hear it. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, in a way, you know, people present. This is it, it's it's so. This is a wonderful example. Okay. I Come remember on. we were at the other house and the exterminator came and I kept saying, why do I keep seeing all these spiders? Can you spray for these spiders? Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, the best thing to do is, and he took out a flashlight and he flashed up in a dark corner and mm -hmm. there were cobwebs. Mm -hmm. And it was a high corner. And he said, you got to get rid of where they live. Mm. So he shined in the darkness and saw the problem. Yes, very good. And he said, just get a broom, you know, <laughs> deal with it, knock hit, it down. Get the corner, knock it down. <laughs> you got to take the food source out, get rid of it. Yes. You know, knock it down, take away their house or whatever. So that's just what made you know, my brain went there because 
here I am thinking the house is clean and this man comes in and shines in this dark corner that we don't yeah. really ever go in. It's all these cobwebs. So that's my problem. Yeah. It's in the darkness. Yes. So it had to come to the light in order for me to deal with it. There you go. That's a so, working example. Right. So to get us back to the whole topic of um, unlocking the hidden treasure. Mm -hmm. This this And so this, this is what we're doing. We're unlocking well, the, the, the treasure, though. The treasure. It sounds like we're talking about trauma. But, but the treasure going, is the trauma. Right. Going through the healing process. Yes. Yes. That's the journey that we have to go on in order to become more divine. Mm -hmm. More like the Most High. To shed the inconsistencies, the inadequacies, the, the historical things that we have experienced that kind of made us us. Mm -hmm. So we have to leave those things behind and continue to press for the mark, mm -hmm. for the prize of the high calling mm -hmm. of Yah through Hamashiach. We're pressing toward those things. And so it's not just in the outcome. It's, a journey. it's in the strength to strive. Mm -hmm. That's where the blessing lies. That's where the treasure is, is you doing the homework. You're really doing the work, mm -hmm. trying to exhume these things, bring it up. You may have thought it was dead, but you bring it back to life and make sure mm -hmm. that it's not going to cause you any more problems. When you hear his name, when you hear her name, when you have this experience that when you see something, when you smell that perfume, whatever it is, that the father has truly healed you from said thing. Mm -hmm. And you don't come into new places with old mindsets, mm -hmm. with old baggage. Because like I said, it's quiet, but it's not voiceless. It comes in, it begins to judge, it begins to critique, mm -hmm. it begins to over-examine, over-simplify, all of these, you know, yeah. these negative connotations. But if you can get past that, that's when you're on the path mm -hmm. of finding like like the man in um in Matthew uh, 13 and 44, he found that treasure mm -hmm. and he bought, he sold everything that he had mm -hmm. just to for get that, that. Yeah. just for that. Just Thank for you. That. Yes. And that's, that's powerful because most of the, the healing, you know, people pray, oh, I want to be more patient. I want to be more loving. Mm. I want to be more. So that's, then the test has got, has to come in order for you to, to validate that you're more patient. To get yeah. there. And people, Correct. you know, old people would say, don't be careful what you pray mm -hmm. for, you know, so mm -hmm. <laughs> you may not be ready for it. But um, in dealing with the marriage specifically, um, a lot of those things require the self work. Yes. So the husband can provide the environment. The husband can do all of these things and still not be pleasing to the wife. Yeah. She can still complain, complain, complain. Mm -hmm. It's not your responsibility to make me happy. Yes. It is not your responsibility to do my work. I have to do my work because it is my test. No more you go sit and take my um, entry to medical school test. You can't do any no. test that I have to pay. I have to pass the test, so I therefore have to do the work. Mm -hmm. And that's any person, any wife, any child, any person that's hoping or looking to overcome something. You have to dig in, figure out the problem, and seek ways to fix it. Yes. Now, the husband will help if you know, if it's not something that you, you can't just be garnering all this attention all the time. Right. Feigning all kinds of problems just Sickness, to get attention. Uh, I got a headache. Um, is this, is that, is right. um, re this, overlapping, right. you know, redundant things right. that come up for this attention seeking behavior. Mm -hmm. That's that's right. not good either. Right. Your husband wants you to, you know, he said some, give you some correction because you didn't cook something or you didn't clean. Now all of a sudden you're you sick and need to go to the ER. Yeah. You know, every time, oh my back hurts. It's, yeah. it's just the way you spoke to me reminded me of my daddy. The, you know, this so and that. Awesome. Right. So. so you can't use that. And men, you have to just call out. Call it out. This this when when this happens. That's manipulation. You have to be stern. And you know, the scripture says that witchcraft won't work against a son of the most high yeah but you can't allow it either mm 
-hmm. You can't have these false balances. And when you allow it, it, it doesn't help them. Mm -hmm. It, it helps them go deeper into that manipulation mm -hmm. and into that witchcraft. And they, they dig their heels in and it's just, they get it away get from really their ugly. treasure. Yeah. They're getting yeah. away from their greater. Yes. So for the lesser, right. Just to be comfortable and make me feel, you know, placate me, make me mm -hmm. feel better about my dysfunction. No, I'm going to help you in every way that I can. I'm, if I need to read, you know, psycho books on psychology, what, whatever it is that I need to we're do to try to videos. assist you, we're, we're going to watch stuff. videos. I'm right. going to I, I make mean, you an appointment. Right. It's, it's right. a lot of great men that are online, um, that are giving great information to help, you know, with relationships. Mm -hmm. She don't have to know what you're watching. Maybe you should watch a little less, you know, doctrinal things. If you know, you've practice the Israelite tradition, maybe a few less, mm -hmm. you know, doctrinal things and start looking into some psychological things that can help you to help your wife, right. that can help you to see beyond some of the nonsense or talk to someone that's been seasoned mm -hmm. um, and that can help you navigate some of this terrain because we need these spiritual maps. We need these natural maps and maps are only tools and instruments that help to reveal the unknown. Mm -hmm. Based on really the, in, in a specific territory, it can reveal um, the distance that you're going to have to go. Topography. It can reveal the time that you have to go. It can reveal the topography. What do we mean by the topography? You need to know, bro, it's, it's a, a river. It's a river right here. <laughs> it's a mountain. It's a, you got to go over a mountain. <laughs> right. You know, it, right. you get ready to go through the desert and you pack your winter clothes. Right. You got to read that map better. So these are the things, these are the tools that a patriarch, that a husband needs in his arsenal and his repertoire to be able to assist his family mm -hmm. to become more divine mm -hmm. and to be in the image and the likeness of, you know, true oneness. What Adam and Hawa, Abraham, Sarah, or the apparatus, as we say, Jacob, um, Leah, Rachel, I put Leah, I put Mama Leah first. I did. Leah, Rachel, <laughs> Bill Hard, and Zilpah. So um, that would be my admonition, family. I want to read one other text because I don't want this to be um, the conclusion of your relationship. I don't, I want us, I truly want us to be better. Mm -hmm. And it starts with family, it starts in a relationship. Um, I, you know, one of our elders, he was talking to us about the three things that um, our oppressor will not teach us, the three sciences. He will not teach us the science of business, the science of war, or the science of family. Families run the world. Mm -hmm. That's why this is so crucial. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely tantamount yeah. to the oxygen that we breathe because without family we will cease to be a singular mindset yet wow. we are we mm -hmm. it's not just me so you know we had you know my wife wanted to buy me something and something i've said that i wanted for what 15 15 years or so <laughs> totally had the ability to to get it it wasn't about that, but I needed to show discipline and forbearance because I said, you know, we're not going to have any more just just frivolous spending. I don't need it. So I I had to talk myself through the directive that I gave <laughs> to my family. Like, OK, this is my time to show mm -hmm. that I'm going to have forbearance. Mm -hmm. And she knows like I could have done it, but I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. So this is what I am going to do. I'm going to read this mark. Then I got one more. Chapter 8. Okay. Mark chapter 8 and verse 17. And Yehoshua knew it. Uh, I, I'll go up to 17. And Yehoshua knew it. Uh, he saith unto them, why, why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. Perceive ye not, yet neither understand. Have ye, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not. Having ears, hear ye not. And do ye not understand? We don't want that to be the epithet, our life statement, mm -hmm. that we have eyes to see. You totally have the organs. You have the ability. 
but there's a veil over your eyes. There's a darkness that's there. And we're trying to get those on this video that are following us and watching us to see that there's so much treasure in that darkness where you're mm -hmm. going to those areas so that even though you so now that you have eyes, you will be able to see you have you have ears. You will be able to hear and not just be able to take in the information. You could have sensory overload, but you're able to understand mm -hmm. it. You can interpret it properly. Mm -hmm. That is our prayer for you guys today. Go ahead, baby. Interpret it properly and use it as a map. And apply it. Mm -hmm. Use it as a use map. Use it as yes. a map to get to the work that needs to be done. Okay. Um, something else came to mind. It came up when we were talking earlier, and it was the um, avoidance of those hidden things, those things that, you know, cause unpleasantness for us. Mm -hmm. And it's the um, lack of wanting to be uncomfortable. Yeah. We don't like discomfort. Mm -hmm. So instead of facing things, uh, we tend to push it aside, avoid it, sidestep it, duck under it, jump over it, close the door and do whatever we have to do to not face it head on. Yeah. Um, so then there comes a time where as an adult who really wants to get to these treasures, who wants to have the glory in life that we read about, we mm -hmm. want to have you know the blessings that come from obedience and having the fruits of the spirit and being you know this righteous being indeed not just in word yes come on that's when you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable yes because you're not the blessing comes from you going through mm -hmm. something going through the gold is tried in the tried fire, in the fire. you gotta go through the yes. fire you got to have some heat on it. You got to go through it. You can't go around it because the next time that comes up, that same situation is going to evoke a response and it's going to knock you back. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be in a situation where now you got to face it again, but you either going to face it or go around it. So how many times is this going to happen? How many times are you going to avoid the treasure? Yes. So we have to then be accountable for where we are. Yes. We have to then be accountable for what we have not achieved, what we have not attained, what level we have not yet risen to. Yes. Because it is our own fault. We're the keeper of the key. Yes. We unlock the tre treasure chest or we just stick the key in our pocket because we're scared of what's in there. Mm -hmm. And we carry it along, become the bag lady. Right. You're going to miss your bus because you can't hurry up. You you're know, you're going to hurt your back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you know, so we become the bag lady and we drag yeah. on this stuff along. And, you know, that the discomfort is not saying that if I deal with this today, then I won't ever be uncomfortable again. That's no. not what it's saying. It's no. just saying that if I deal with it in the right way today, in two, three, four, five years, if I'm faced with this again i'm now equipped yes to handle it I'm not saying i won't be uncomfortable again but i may not be uncomfortable as long yes i may not be as uncomfortable i may not experience the same kind of discomfort yes. but at least i know that i'm an overcomer oh yeah Come and on. that i can get through yes yes i can deal with the things that have me in this place today so that I can be greater on the other side, especially for a wife. You want to be greater for your husband. You want to be able to be a fully capable and whole help me. Yes. For your husband, for his children, for his household, for his legacy. You have to be whole. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't whole and you're not willing to do the Use work, you may need to get help or get on. Because it's really, time is not of the, it is, it is of the essence, but it is not on our side. Yeah. So we have to really get our minds right, do the work, face those demons, face those things that we've allowed to live in the recesses and the darkness in our minds that we babysit, that we mm -hmm. pacify, yes. that we tell ourselves is okay, that we console ourselves with this. Mm -hmm. My mom used to call it having a pity party. Yeah. 
I don't go to pity parties. She said, don't invite me because I'm not coming. I'm not coming to your pity party. No, not at all. So that's just my piece. Um, Did you have anything else? No, I think that that was was a great wrap up. I think you did a phenomenal job. That was a weighty thing that you've expressed. I have nothing to put on it, but uh, Toda, uh, yeah, for another opportunity. I pray that he was uh, glorified and that you were edified. Thank you guys for stopping by. And checking us out with the Go Lightly Perspective, feel free to uh, share this content if it's been beneficial to you. And also, if you have other questions, you know, put it in the chat. Reach out to us. We're available. Um, but, yeah, you did a masterful job with that, babe. Uh, Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I'm happy. Like and I'm subscribe, pleased. guys. I'm pleased. Told you. Me up. too. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching. All right, family. We'll shalom. see you next time. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. We won't have any outro music. No, we don't. No, it'll be all right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs> Good job.